there are only two months left for neat exam and if your grand test marks are still stuck at 200 300 400 or even 500s and you're doing everything you're studying you're giving regular grand test but your marks are still stuck at a certain range like they're stuck between 200 to 300 they're stuck between 300 to 400 and something like that and you don't know how to get out of it then this video is definitely for you and it is completely made for you because two months before my neat exam even my marks were stuck at 400 to 450s and I did not know what to do but slowly I implemented some strategies into my grand test routine in the last two months and that was a complete game changer because my marks went from 400 to 450 to 500 to 550 and in the last few mock tests I even got 600 so it was almost a 150 mark jump and that is a game changer for your NEET preparation and also for your rank in the NEET exam so listen to this video completely and I will guarantee you that your grand test marks will improve and you will again never be stuck in your grand test marks hi i'm akhil raj a third year mbbs student and in the recent video you guys showed a lot of support and many new people joined the channel and i hope last video was very helpful to a lot of you if you haven't watched that video then go and check it out the link will be in the description or you can watch it in my channel also and that video was very helpful to a lot of people now coming to this video this video is completely based on grand test so first let's talk about the frequency if you are worried that your syllabus is not complete and you are scared that you should not give grand test now because you will get very less marks because your syllabus is not complete then you are making a big mistake even if you have completed only 70 to 80 percent of the syllabus then start giving grand test immediately because you are making a big mistake by not giving grand test people will think that if my syllabus is not complete i won't be able to complete the questions and then i will get very less marks and i will get demotivated that and this but this is high time you have only two months left and you have to at least give 15 grand tests or 20 grand tests in order to have a very clear idea about how a paper will look how you have to manage time how to attempt the paper and how to maintain a calm mind inside the paper and these skills are very important and they will only develop when you start giving your grand test so don't wait for the last moment don't think that you will start grand test after covering your syllabus because trust me your syllabus will never be complete even if i give you one more year extra your syllabus will never be complete and you will always feel that you have to read something or the other and you will feel that you are forgetting something or the other it's just a grand test it's just a mock test it's marks don't really matter it doesn't decide your future so start giving your mock test as soon as possible if you haven't even completed 70 percent of your syllabus then complete your syllabus at least by march second week or third week and then immediately start giving grand test until then solve every single chapter's pyqs whenever you complete the chapter like i discussed in the previous video so fix one single date and start giving grand test every week on that day particularly 2 to 5 pm only so that you can recreate the neat circumstances so let's say you are giving your grand test on Sunday in the March month you are going to give complete four grand tests in April you have to give two mock tests every week and in that month you have to give at least eight to ten grand tests within that month before entering your NEET exam because grand test is what builds your practice and it will give you confidence and it will give you a lot of ideas which we will discuss further on in the video now we are done with the frequency of the grand test but how to give the grand test what is the attempting strategy so I'll divide the attempting strategy into three different parts first is what to do before the exam what to do in the exam and the third one is what to do after the exam so pre-exam in the exam and post exam so first starting off with what you should do before the exam so let's say you are giving a grand test on the next sunday and today is sunday so you have seven days left you are going to divide the entire syllabus or whatever you have to cover or whatever are your week areas that you are planning to cover in the one week in only six days you are going to live one day for revision and revision only lot of people what they'll do they'll read the entire seven days and they'll feel that they have not completed this topic they are weak in that topic that topic will come in the exam this topic will come in the exam they keep reading reading and reading only and never prioritize revision now i'm saying to prioritize revision because revision is very important and if you are going to read for seven days straight then definitely you will forget what you read on the first day and if it is your weak area then you'll definitely forget it because it's already a weak area and you don't have a better grip on it so always cover your syllabus within six days and leave one day for revision and that day you will revise and the next day you are going to give your mock test so that you will remember whatever you read in the six days and you will cover off your weak topics and you will become strong at it and in the grand test your marks will start improving so this is what you will do before exam and do not postpone your grand test if your syllabus is not complete if you thought you are going to keep the grand test on Sunday then give it on Sunday no matter what happens even if your syllabus isn't complete even if you think you are going to score low even if you think you are not ready you should definitely give your grand test and do not skip it at any cost because this is high time that you start giving your grand test and those are very important 
important so now moving on to what to do in the exam in the exam you will start off with biology then to chemistry and then to physics this is the best order and there cannot be anything better than this for people scoring around 200 to 500 marks because biology is a very important part and you have to get at least 330 340 and 345 because that is where you are going to score the maximum number of marks and if you postpone biology to the last moment you will see that your time is running out in the exam and you will start panicking you will start making silly mistakes you will start making guesses you will start forgetting the concepts and when you lose marks in the biology there is no coming back because a lot of people have scored a lot of marks in biology and your rank is going to go lags behind a lot of people and you are not going to get a seat so if you are scoring less than 500 definitely prioritize doing biology in the first 45 minutes to 50 minutes that's it after that you are going to begin with chemistry and then you are going to do physics now coming to the three round strategy for grantors this is a very important strategy and this will improve your marks by a lot so first round is going to be for one and a half an hour and you are going to read every single question in the paper and you are going to decide that you know the answer or you don't know the answer some questions are very conceptual and they are very short and you can get the answer within 30 seconds or one minute so you're going to solve all those questions in the first round and whatever questions you don't know and whatever questions you feel are lengthy and whatever questions you are stuck between two options you are going to circle and move on you are not going to waste time on some question which is very lengthy or some question which you don't know in the first round because we have other rounds for that i'll explain further you have completed all the basic questions in the paper and you have secured some marks you have already reached 300 marks or 400 marks from biology chemistry and physics and you have attempted almost 100 to 120 questions in this one hour of the second round you are going to look back and check all the questions which you have circled now the circled questions can be of three types the questions which you don't exactly remember the formula but you have read it somewhere and you need some time to recollect the concept the second is going to be you know the concept but you're stuck between two options you don't know it is option a or option b option b or option c so you're confused between two options the third type of the questions are the questions which you completely don't have any idea you don't know the concept you don't know the formula you don't know what is the question itself so in these three questions the questions which you do not remember the concept try to sit down for at least one minute or two minutes for each question because you have a lot of time left still for the exam if you are not able to solve the question within two minutes then definitely move on it is not your girlfriend to sit and cry about you don't have a lot of time you only have 180 minutes for 180 questions and you have already spent your first one and a half an hour and you only have the remaining one and a half an hour because if you spend 10 minutes for a question some guy beside you is going to solve almost 15 questions in that 10 minute time period and he's going to get almost 60 marks or 50 marks from those 15 questions and you are still solving the one question which you may get the answer correct or you may get a negative mark so never waste your time on a single question if you don't know if you cannot solve it within two minutes or three minutes then definitely move on circle it cross it or do whatever and move on from that question and start solving other questions next you are going to the questions where you are stuck between two options and you don't know what is the correct option obviously you are going to have a gut feeling about some options so definitely mark that option if you are confident about it or if you are not confident and you vaguely remember the options and you don't know the clear difference between the two options then leave the question we don't want any excessive negative marks but definitely remember to mark that question so that you can later on review which i will discuss in the post exam part now let's move on to the questions in which you don't know the concept at all try to look around and find some logic for it and some formula so that you can recollect something if you cannot recollect anything spend one minute over it and move on because you don't know the concept you cannot do anything about it don't sit and waste your time over it thinking that you are the intelligent person in the room and you are going to solve this question and then only you are going to move on to the next question because you are going to lose marks as i said some guy will solve 15 questions and you will solve only one question in which you can still get a negative mark in the last half an hour you are going to start bubbling all the answers in your omr sheet without making making any mistake because we cannot afford any silly mistakes just because we did not do the proper bubbling and if you have any remaining time then focus on the questions which you could not figure out or the questions which are trying to leave try to make some guesses on what could be the option and later on you can analyze even if it goes wrong because it's just a mock test now let's talk about how to avoid the silly mistakes whatever the words are given in the question like not correct which can be which cannot be which can occur which cannot occur which are incorrect which are correct which are not correct, which statement is the most suitable, which statement is not suitable for the particular condition. So there are a lot of grammar play in NEET exam. They are not going to test your concept. They are going to test your presence of mind. They are going to test how accurately you are putting your options and how focused you are inside the exam hall. That is all about NEET. Let's say you need to apply two formulas to complete the question. First formula you will apply, you will get some value and that value will be useful in the second formula. What the examiner will do, he will give an option of the first value. जो तुमने फर्स्ट फॉर्मला लगाया और उसमें से आंसर निकला तुम्हारा 
वो आंसर वो निकाल के क्या कर देगा ऑप्शन में लगा देगा यू विल स्टार्ट सॉल्विंग इन अ फ्लो एंड वंस यू गेट द आंसर यू विल फॉरगेट अबाउट द सेकंड फॉर्मला एंड यू डोंट नो व्हाट द एग्जामिनर इज आस्किंग एंड यू विल इमीडिएटली मार्क ऑफ दैट ऑप्शन एंड यू विल फॉल इनटू द ट्रैप एंड यू विल एंड अप गेटिंग नेगेटिव मार्क्स एंड देन आफ्टर द एग्जाम यू आर गोइंग टू रियलाइज दैट अरे दिस वाज सो सिंपल व्हाई डिड आई मेक दैट मिस्टेक बोले तो यू वर इन अ हरी इट इज अ वेरी सिली मिस्टेक लॉट ऑफ पीपल डू दिस इफ यू डोंट हैव अ क्लियर आईडिया ऑन व्हाट इज द क्वेश्चन आस्किंग व्हाट इज गोइंग टू बी द आंसर व्हाट आर द यूनिट्स यू हैव टू चेक ऑल दीस थिंग्स इन ऑर्डर टू अवॉइड your silly mistake and whenever you are doing the statement questions and all that underline the keywords like correct not correct and all that so that you do not make any silly mistake in physics the underline what is the value being asked if he is asking mass if he is asking acceleration if he is asking the gravity or whatever he is asking and never get excited once you start getting a lot of questions correct because once people start getting all questions correct in biology or chemistry or something like that they become more confident and they start increasing the speed than other they are sticking every single question and writing of options whatever they get into their mind and they don't give it a second thought and coming out of the exam all they are going to realize that are this was so simple why did not i think this are this is only option it is clear why did i forget this why did i make this mistake bolke they will be tensed and they will be scolding themselves but this is because of your over confidence and you should not do that and if you are anxious and you are nervous about the exam and you are thinking about what your parents will say if you are scoring less what will happen if you don't get a selection don't think all that in the grand test your only focus should be on the 180 questions and 180 questions only there should not be any single thought in your head during grand test and you have to focus completely in those three hours about solving questions of biology physics and chemistry only and only you have prepared a lot for this exam and you are ready for this exam you just need to maintain a calm mind and put everything that you know everything that is in your brain onto the paper and get some marks that is as simple as that you have spent almost two years three years or even four years struggling for this exam and if simply you are going to get a brain fog or blackout inside your exam hall after doing all that hard work then what is the purpose of it you are experiencing a lot of panic attack or anxiety or you are worried a lot and you are not able to focus inside the exam hall then try to meditate every single day for 10 minutes or 15 minutes as i told in the last video and this will definitely help you improve your focus and please stop using instagram and stop scrolling through youtube shorts because they are eating away your focus span and you cannot focus for more than 1 minute or 2 minutes inside the exam hall you are constantly remembering the reel ka gana or the trending song or the trending reel or whatever and your focus is being disturbed so stop using instagram stop doom scrolling and all that so that you can regain your attention span and stop using your phone as much as possible and start focusing on your studies because there are only two months left even if you are slacking for one day or two day also then you are going to be a lot behind from lot of people because competition is increasing every single year and people are not taking it easily everybody is preparing everybody has the resources and everybody is ready to give whatever it takes so now let's discuss what to do after the exam you're done with the grand test you are going to go back to your room open the grand test paper and start analyzing every single question if you have made the question right then leave that question but if you have circled the question and somehow later figured out the answer and if it got correct then do not ignore that question sometimes what people will do they think that this question is already correct we don't have to do any analysis on it but you were stuck between two options one option was correct one option was wrong that means you are considering that the wrong option is still the correct option so your concept is somewhere lacking so always whenever you are going to get a correct answer from two options and you are somehow guessing it then definitely reanalyze it after your exam and whatever the questions which you could not figure out inside the exam hall like you did not know the formula you did not know the concept obviously do the analysis for them open the textbook and read that concept thoroughly not only the part which is asked in the exam but the entire concept from starting to ending because this multiple revision of this concept will make you so strong in it and the next time whenever you are going to get a question from this topic you will never make it wrong because you have read the entire topic for just one question and by doing this multiple times you are going to get a grip on ncert so much that whatever be the question from whatever topic your marks are going nowhere because you are never going to make a mistake because you have analyzed all your mistakes learn from your mistakes and in your neat you are not going to commit any mistake because you have done it so many times you have revised it so many times that you are definitely going to put the correct option and get those four marks so you have analyzed the questions which you did not have the concept for you have analyzed the questions in which you have lost between two options or gained the mark between two options and then you are going to analyze the questions in which you made silly mistakes like not correct correct was up and you are going to underline those statements in the ncert because you got confused between the statements and you did not know what is correct and what is wrong so you have to underline those statements and you have to write down that this is the statement question and this will be asked inside the exam like this bolke write down down in your ncert with a red pen or black pen or whatever pen you use 
so that the next time you are reading NCRT, you will realize that this line can be asked as a statement. It can be asked as a true or false question. It can be asked as a correct or not correct statement or something like that. So you are going to focus more on the statement and the next time that statement is asked in the exam, you are never going to make a mistake from it. So always mark down your mistakes in your textbook and also follow up with the complete concept so that you can never make a mistake and note them down in a separate mistake book so that you can revise them at ease and every single day you don't have to you know go through your entire textbook just to find your mistakes make a mistake book so this is about the post exam analysis you're going to come back you are going to check every single circled question and every single question you guessed every single question you did not know the answer and whatever it is and you are going to do a complete analysis within three or four hours after the exam and from the next day again you will start preparing for the next grand test and every single day or two days you are going to open your mistake book and start revising everything from it because sometimes you may forget your mistakes and recommit them and that will lead to a lot of regret because last time you got it wrong this time you are getting it wrong and in neat also you are going to get it wrong if you do not revise it properly and that is a very big mistake if it costs your seat then it is a very sad feeling and you have to again wait for one more year just because you did not revise your mistake book and that is very sad and I don't want that to happen to you so every two days or at least three days open your mistake book and start revising everything because mistake book is everything because knowledge can get you only up to a certain point no matter how many revisions you do no matter how much you read from the textbook you cannot improve your marks unless and until you are not learning from your mistakes you are going to commit them again and again and again unless and until you are going to analyze and learn from those mistakes and know how to prevent those mistakes on the next time and build your concepts from those mistakes so that the next time that question appears in your exam paper you are never going to make a mistake and you are never going to leave a single mark behind just because you did not analyze your mistakes or you did not make the mistake book so in total to summarize before the exam you are going to prioritize your revision in the exam you are not going to panic you are not going to make silly mistakes you are going to underline whatever the keywords are present in the question and you are going to check for units and dimensions and you are going to try to eliminate options before trying to figure out the actual option so that you can save some time in the calculation part and you can actually find out the answer and your mock test marks will start improving by this if you do this 101% I am giving you guarantee that your mark test marks will improve. So trust me and start doing your analysis, start reading properly, start prioritizing revision, stop making silly mistakes and start attempting your paper in a smart way. Learn how to manage your time by using three round strategy and do not make any mistakes in OMR sheets because outside there is a lot of competition, every single question matters and if you are going to lose one question, you are going to go behind 1000, 10,000 and 1 lakh rank and even a lot of lakhs of ranks behind a lot of people. And you're never going to get a selection so please focus on the minor things only it is not about completing syllabus it is about how you give your grand test it is about how you do your analysis and it is about your mentality and mindset start doing everything in your power start reading for 12 hours 14 hours 16 hours whatever is possible give your everything for this attempt and definitely you are going to become a doctor this year if you follow every single step i told you in this video so please start working and all the best for your exams i hope you all get a very good mark and you get into your dream colleges that's it for this video. I'll see you next Wednesday. Until then, bye-bye.